this session we will look at uh, operational amplifiers and the use of operational amplifiers in terms of uh, creating different kind of waveforms, uh, mainly triangular wave from a square wave. So as we had seen we looked at uh, a resistor going into an op amp. So the negative positive indicates uh, which side the amplifier amplifies from. Uh, in the case of what we have been looking at in terms of null letters and narrators, it, it does not make a difference because uh, it's infinite gain. But if you don't have infinite gain as you would have when you are trying to simulate it, then the signs would matter. So if we if we look at a case where we have some sort of a square wave that is being fed then this uh, as we had discussed the current this is Vn would be Vn by R and it can't flow here so it has to flow here and the voltage across the capacitor since this is the current the voltage across the capacitor should be integral of the current over the capacitance So if, if you look at either of the two sides here, the input is constant, let's say it's plus 1 volt and here it's minus 1 volt. There. So in that case, for that it's either high or low, let's say it's high, so then this I is just 1 divided by R, that I is 1 by R the C is there, integral of dt. So this is a constant, so this is just 1 over Rc. And integral of dt, if we assume that this is 0 time, and this is the time that's changing, so then this is an integral from 0 up to some time t. Let's say you still not reached the period, that is just t. Well, all it's saying is that the integral of a constant is a slope that's always going up. So if I had the square wave, pumping current in and this voltage is going to be higher than that voltage so actually it's um, the, this is the voltage across the capacitor this node is at zero or it should be because of the null letter which means this voltage is actually negative so when this is high the voltage should be ramping down it's an integration so the area keeps increasing and the area basically looks like that and then when it goes to the negative side of it it actually starts ramping up so that's what we should we, we expect and the slope here um, is, is what we are getting here right so this is the voltage of the input and what we are talking about is of course voltage at the output is minus of this of course. minus of this minus of this ok so this is voltage of the output and uh, so then when we are talking about it as a function of time the x axis is time in both 
both cases. And uh, so the slope, how much does it change as a function of time? Is minus one over R sin. And here the slope is one over R sin. It's increasing. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do this for a specific waveform and then I'm going to show it uh, in simulation for a specific waveform and then you can you can see what happens. The one thing to be noted is if the capacitor already had a charge, the voltage is only going to change from that point, like here. The slope is fine, but it's going to change from this point. In integration, this is always true. If you did not have limits in an integration, or if there was a voltage that was present at time zero, then that would continue to be there in the capacitor. You have to charge and discharge it from the from the value it already had. Uh, usually, in integration, for example, an integral of x dx is going to be x square by two plus c. Basically, indicating that there is usually some constant, and when you put limits of an integration, you try to define this constant. Uh, why I'm saying this is that in your simulation, if there is already a charge present across the capacitor, then that will determine where this voltage starts and ends from. So it's not always necessary that you will have time axis here. That it will be symmetric across your voltage of plus and minus. This is not necessary. It depends a lot on how the waveform is and where you start and so on, which is the tricky part with the integration.